I'm going to go a little uh, left field on everybody, and, and we've been talking about these these fantastic shows. I'm going to come back to Netflix here, um, and uh, this show's got, uh, I think they got about like three seasons in, um, or at least on the American side, it, how Netflix get these things, and it's weird, and how all the seasons go, but um, it's a Japanese show, and uh, basically it's about a man who uh, who has a diner, opens up at midnight, and um, and all of the cast of characters that comes in, and um, and their stories and the kind of people who are coming off of their job or kind of living at midnight, um, and uh, it's uh, it's what's uh, I've come to know is a, a term called slice of life. So there's no overarching, you know, whatever. There's no big bad guy. It's just hey, this is what's happening in somebody's life, and apparently that's big in the anime community, but. This is a uh, this is a live action show. Uh, All right. and it's called This is why you should be watching The Midnight Diner. Oh, what a great title. I love that title just as yeah. wow. And uh, it's a fantastic show. It, it's just something it, you you have to sub it and but you know if you just want to kind of just it's just a pleasant show to watch and just kind of sit down kind it kind of got you through the pandemic <laughs> one of those shows you know what you I'm, I'm i'm a huge mark for food porn and if it's and to use food as the vehicle to mm-hmm. tell these stories oh yeah most definitely that's really good yeah his and and the uh the the owner slash chef in in the show his premise is you know uh he'll make you anything you want if he's got the uh, if he's got the ingredients and so people in you know in the episodes somebody will bring him hey you know a bunch of ingredients hey can you make me this all right, cool. You know, and so he'll he heads to the back, gives you know gets person a beer, and you know all the people start talking and and uh, and you kind of get these these fun backstories, these these kind of wacky, cool. you know, kind of sometimes wacky backstories for these people. It's it's a fun. Does it get weird? Japanese things tend to get weird. Sometimes. There's, <laughs> I, I think, like in like the the second or third season, I was like, hey man, why are, why are we starting to sexualize my show? But it it was just you know the the character. You know, she kind of, you know, did a, she was like a stripper or something, it, but it was, but it came back. It was, it's just a very, it doesn't get weird. Um, All right. So I'll, I'll just answer your question. It doesn't get weird. It's just a nice, pleasant show. It's, it's my, and I, I didn't see the show, but I'm feeling Mel's Diner meets Taxi Cab Confessions. <laughs> Yeah, there and you cheers. go. Sure. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> with like cheers. with a little bit of cheers. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah definitely. Uh, cheers, and you have like a a small like sometimes you have like recurring cast members who are like real fun, um, but uh, but basically it's like yeah, like cheers. But then you had like new people come in and just start you know telling their story. Wow. Yeah. You know, and, and I just love incorporating food into these stories. I think that's a, a big part of you know. Anthony Bourdain's appeal mm-hmm. was obviously that was a big obviously besides his magnetic personality, but there's something about since the beginning of time, food has been part of the rituals, whether whether it's telling stories or mm-hmm. coming together. You know, when you were talking about the Jap- a Japanese show, I was thinking one of my favorite documentaries was Hero Dreams of Sushi, mm-hmm. yeah, great documentary, which a great one, and it just. But most of the time when the food comes, it's a very chill experience. Mm-hmm. There's not an aggressive... Right. This is an aggressive food show, which I don't know. Maybe you were talking about that. You know, the U.S. version of a lot of these cooking shows get a little bit too mm-hmm. toxic, where it's just like, no, I don't want my food. I eat food with a spoon, not a slingshot. <laughs> chill out, right? <laughs> yeah. And, so, and at the end of... like, I, I believe it at the end of these epi- each episode in Midnight Diner, they show you like the, the they have like a dish... Oh, that I was going to just over. say they're going to show you the recipe. And they or? show you, oh, here's how you make this dish. Oh, just, wow. What a great idea. It's, Simple, it's basic. Such a Again, good that sounds like solid entertainment. It, it does. Really is. Hollywood, stop. It, enough with that. Uh, there's room for IPs. We're marks for IPs, but let the original stuff flow too. You'll make some yeah. money, especially when you don't have to spend a ton of money on yeah. it either. And apparently, um, there's a, a South Korean and a Chinese version of the show. They, I mean, it, it's such a great premise. I'm oh, sure, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm going to pick that up and do that too. Wow. And now we're going to get to the point, right, where it was always famous, you know, The Office and Friends. It was like they were British shows that became U.S. shows. But now with the streaming market being global, do you take the time to remake a version of a show? Or like you say, do you just sub it sub and it. serve it? Yeah, sub it. Sub yeah. it and serve it and you'll get the same experience. And you can eventually do like a 
a pivot into like a U.S. version. Sure, yeah. Is that a is that a Netflix show? That's a Netflix show. So yep. Netflix and Apple, are, they're they're running the board a little bit. They're a little bit higher. They're uh, we're we're we'll go back and we'll we'll put a scoreboard on here. Speak. Can I hijack the podcast real hijack quick? It, yeah. Um, you know what would be a great idea for Netflix, and I wonder if they did this. What if that Squid Game reality show that's coming out, right? When that comes out, what if it's actually Squid Game, <laughs> like for real? Wouldn't that be the ultimate twist if Netflix just turned heel like that? Oh yeah, and just that would like, be the wildest well, thing. Well, they did announce they are going to be doing a reality show, game show like Squid Games, but the twist. So you're saying turn heel and like, well, we forgot to tell you, you really might die in this yeah. show, and then we're watching people <laughs> actually die. Oh man, and that's we were we're watching the actual Squid Game, but they could also do it as a work and just like trick us, <laughs> and we wouldn't be able the to tell, turn. right? Just like exactly a, a like War of the Worlds style. It's oh, like man. like they release all the episodes of the Squid Game reality show, and then they're worked where it's like people start actually dying, and then people are on Twitter is like, "Are you what? Are you watching Squid Game? People are actually dying, yeah. and they they just no sell it the whole way until people freak out." Yeah, and about six episodes in, and then when they're like FBI is like freeze, and then the actors come out like we're fine, yeah, like, we're oh, good. Yeah. Like, what can you do? Can you get in trouble for that? I mean, yeah. I don't know if there's time to reshoot that. 